In this video, we'll go over how you can get the most out of Gather's AI Obituary Builder feature, and how it can help you save time and be an asset to your families who might not know where to begin writing about their loved one. From your dashboard view, you can easily view how many cases have a completed obituary. For example, with Brendan's case or Stella's case, you can see the word count for the obituary displayed on the case card. However, for Jameson's case, you can see that there are zero words for the obituary and it is still unlocked. So let's go ahead and click into Jameson's case. You'll find the Complete Loved One's Obituary Task on your Standard Tasks checklist on the left. As with other tasks, you can assign this to family helpers to work on or to another member of your staff. The current word count will be visible on the task itself to show you its progress without having to click into it each time. Let's go ahead and click into the task. From here, let's go ahead and get started. You can see all the information on the left-hand side. These are going to be the different sections that we need to complete for the loved one's obituary. The loved one's information section gives you an overview of the death certificate information that has been added so far. If you click on edit this information or the continue editing the death certificate link just below it, you'll be taken directly back to the death certificate task to edit from there. Back on the obituary task, you can click next to proceed through each new section or simply click on the next box to proceed. Our next section will be our loved ones, loved ones. Anyone that you have added as a family helper or entered into the death certificate section, such as the spouse, parents, or informant will show here, either as living family or deceased family. More people can be added here if need be. Next is going to be our loved ones events. Clicking here will show you all events that have been scheduled in Gather, and you have the option to schedule more from here if you need to. You can also choose to not include any or all events in the obituary Per event. Family helpers will be able to see currently scheduled events and opt to include or not include them in the obituary, but will not see the option to schedule new events. Additionally, we have personal information. This will not be pulling from anywhere in Gather, and so it will need to be filled in completely from scratch. This is a great opportunity for families to be prompted to expand on aspects of their loved one's life that they possibly hadn't considered including. And last, but certainly not least, we have the Configure Obituary section. This is where your team or family can customize this loved one's obituary even further. Starting with the Settings button in the top right corner, you and your families can indicate specific instructions for this obituary. Some examples we have listed are to write this obituary in a different language, implement a word limit, or to mention which funeral home is hosting services. Changing these settings here will only make changes for this specific case. You next have the option to choose the approximate length you'd like the obituary to be, as well as select a tone or style of writing of the piece. Let your families have fun with this one. This will change the entire feel of the obituary and can bring more levity or reverence to their words, depending on what they're going for. Choose some descriptive words about our loved one and a few other details. You can also indicate the perspective the obituary should be written from, as it will change up the verbiage and tone. Seeing a first-person obituary for your families could be pretty special, even if they don't end up using it. If the box is checked to include quotes or verses in our loved one's obituary, one or a handful of thoughtfully chosen quotes will be included, based on other interests or attributes already included above, such as religion. Now we're ready to generate our obituary. Once you've clicked on the Generate Obituary button, Gather will let you know that the obituary is being worked on and it will be ready shortly. Once ready, the individual working on this task can add to or edit the generated obituary, especially if they were not happy with the first iteration. Just below your obituary space, you'll see a button to add a link to this loved one's remember page. This is a great place to add a link, or if there are any donation opportunities or causes that the family would have included, those can be included here. Underneath your link, families can indicate if they would like this obituary put in a newspaper publication and any details regarding this process. It's very important to know the difference between saving, locking, and completing the obituary task. Saving your changes in the top right corner will save any progress the helper has made so far, giving them an opportunity to return and keep editing. Clicking on the back arrow will prompt you to save any changes before leaving the page also. 
Locking the obituary will prevent a family helper from returning to make any changes. Saving your changes in the top left corner is important. So this indicates to your team that the obituary is locked from any further changes. Completing the obituary task is probably the most important step in this process. Once the obituary task is marked as complete, the loved one's obituary will be posted to their public remember page, but not before. Helpers can lock and complete this task at the same time. 